Hey, and welcome back to Smoky Ribs. I'm going to be doing a brisket today by request. I've actually been requested to do this numerous times, and the biggest deterrent for me in doing a brisket up to now has been the price of beef. It's just crazy what these things can run when they just about used to give them away. But I was able to find a 10 and a half pound brisket yesterday at my butcher over in Long Beach at Rick's Meat Hook. And uh, it was $4.79 a pound, which is still a little pricey in my opinion, but it's a lot better than what I've been seeing. And it's a good looking brisket, 10 and a half pounds. And I'm gonna be cooking it on a brand new product that just got here Friday. I put it together yesterday. And what I'm talking about is the Affinity Grill Dome Kamado, Kamado style cooker complete with a Cypress work table. This thing is really nice and I can't wait to get started with it. I bought it in a uh, black. They come in multiple colors and uh, I'm really excited about this and can't wait to get started. So let's do it. So the first thing we got to do is get our brisket ready. And so what I'm going to do here is do some trimming on some things that need to come off that do not come off from the uh, processing plant. So what you have right here, this is the meat part of this brisket that you would normally use for burn ends. And that's exactly what's going to happen if we leave that on here. We're going to have burn ends. So I'm taking this off. I'm going to actually save it refreeze it for a later cook all right let's gonna lay that off to the side now you got some very heavy fat right in here and I'm gonna start laying this open to where I can see where I'm at now this is the kind of fat that's not going to render down good at all you, you really need to get it off it's really a, a hard type of fat it's not going to render, it's, it's not going to do anything for this brisket, so we're going to remove it. Alright, now what I'm looking for on the fat cap is somewhere between a quarter to a half inch, and that's about what I got. I don't think I'm going to do any trimming on this fat cap. You really want this. This is a fat that is going to make this a very juicy and tender brisket in time. I'm going to flip it over. All right, now this, this big layer of fat right here, this is what is referred to as the decal or the hill. And there again, that's just this hard fat that's way too much. It's not going to do anything for this brisket and it needs to come off of here. So once again, I'm just going to lay into this with my knife without removing any meat. And we're just going to simply cut this off and remove it. Now see this cut right here? That was done through the processing. No big deal. There is a little bit of silver skin here that I'm going to remove off the top of that. For the most part, this brisket's in pretty good shape. I do still got some hard fat right here, but not much. Just a small layer of it. We should be okay. Alright, let's get ready to season this bad boy. Alright, I'm getting ready to season this brisket up. Keep in mind what this is. This is a uh, Texas style brisket and some of your better joints there in uh, Texas that serve up brisket go as basic as they can, simple as they can on the rub to really bring out the beef flavor that brisket offers. 
and what I'm talking about is salt and pepper and that is it. All right, I'm not doing a competition style brisket here. Uh, a lot of your your teams in competitions will inject a brisket. They will put just a ton of rub on there, all kinds of flavors going on. And the reason for that being they have one bite to impress that judge with flavor. And um, I'm doing a home version here, something that you can consume the whole brisket and enjoy every bite of it. And you want that beef to really come through. So what I've got here, like I said, is 50% salt, 50% cracked black pepper, fresh ground, just ground it myself. All right, we're just gonna put a coat all over the surface, just like this. I'm not going real heavy either. All right, just gonna simply pat that in. That is just about perfect there. That's where I like it seasoned at. All right, I'm gonna flip it over. We're gonna do the same thing on the back side. And by the way, I will be cooking this fat side up. Fat, in my way of thinking, and many others, is a natural base. You know, it will base this meat as it cooks. Most competition briskets go fat side down, but uh, a home version, you do wanna go fat side up and let that really get into that meat and baste it. All right, I think I have this perfectly seasoned. I'm not overdone, I'm not underdone. It's just the right amount. All right, I'm gonna let this come up to room temperature for around an hour. That will give me time to get my grill dome adjusted out into the right temperature. And uh, I'll meet you outside. You're watching Smoky Ribs. Okay, I'm using a lump of charcoal, and as you can see, I've got a full firebox here. This is gonna be an extremely long, low, and slow on this brisket. And I've got my Grill Dome Rapid Light electric starter. I'm starting up a few charcoal right here on top, and we're almost there. Matter of fact, I think we are there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Just gonna place this in a safe place because it is hot. We're going to go ahead and let this catch. Probably let it go for about another 10 minutes uncovered. And uh, I'll bring you back here in a few minutes. All right, now I'm placing some hickory chunks in here. I'm going to put enough in here for about a good two to three hours worth of smoke. This is a large cut of meat. All right, we got one, two, three. I got four about the same size and a little small one here. We're going to go with that right there. Now I'm putting the deflector plate rack in the bottom here. Now from there, I've got the deflector plate itself. This is a ceramic stone wrapped in aluminum foil. I've got it wrapped only for the ease and cleanup of this stone here. All right, now I'm going to place the grate on here. Now at this point, I'm going to close it down. I've got the bottom vent wide open. All right, I'm going to open my wheel here all the way up. I've got my bottom vent all the way up. All right, I'm gonna watch the temperature. When it comes up to 200, I'm gonna start adjusting my heat by the top here. I'm gonna leave the bottom wide open. We're gonna do all the adjustment right here. There's no reason you can't do that because I have a good tight seal on the, uh, the hatch, the door here where it closes. There's a gasket there, good tight seal. This also has a good tight seal. And by the way, this is a new design for the grill dome, if you remember, Looking at some of the other videos, you've seen set screws right here where you had to tighten it into your ceramic. They've abolished that. Now there's a, a clamp that goes from underneath. There's a gasket that sits right in here and it, it pulls it down tight. Really good design. All right, now as you can see, I have hit my target temp at 250 degrees, dead on the money. We're gonna go ahead and raise this up and get this brisket on. All right, I still got a little bit more smoke cranking out than what I would like to have, but we're going to calm down here in a few minutes. Go ahead and put this brisket on. Fat side up, close her down. All right, I hope this is picking up on video. All I have is a very light blue smoke, and that's exactly what you want. When I initially put this brisket on, it was too much smoke, and I knew it was, but I also knew it wasn't going to last but a few minutes, not enough to hurt anything. One mistake a lot of people make is just cranking smoke and smoke and smoke into their meat, and it just overpowers it. It makes it bitter, and uh, it's not good. You want a very light smoke coming out. And I've been holding a constant 250 degrees right here on this thermometer. Also hooked up my eye grill, and I've got a thermometer inserted into the meat, 
and I also have a thermometer probe sitting at great level so I can monitor the temperature of the grate versus this dial right here and they're only a few degrees out it's not enough to worry about I'm not going to touch it I've got it set perfectly I've got a little less than a quarter inch gap right here on this vent I got my bottom wide open and this thing is holding rock steady you need to go over there and check grill dome out they got a YouTube channel and also in the description box I've got a link to a, a weekly newsletter and in that newsletter it'll have a weekly recipe as well as specials that they run so go over there and check them out all right I'm exactly four hours into this cook now see I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and do a wrap on this this is the color I like this is a nice mahogany color and a lot of people will just leave it uncovered and let it get almost a black bark on it but I like it like this and uh, not only that, I got kind of a late start this morning. I didn't get this on at 8 o'clock. This is a 10 and a half pound. It takes about an hour to hour and a half per pound to cook. And so this thing's not going to be done if I leave it like this to about 8 o'clock tonight. I'll go ahead and grab this brisket. I'm going to get up under this flat end here. I'm going to get up under the point on this end with this spatula. I'm going to simply remove it over to the foil. I'm going to reinsert this probe I'm trying to go into the deepest part of this point without really going into the fat that decal is between the point and the bottom there is part of the flat and there's a layer of flat of fat in there and I'm trying to avoid hitting that so we're going to try that right there all right now I've got this wrap with three layers of aluminum foil this is going to ensure that no steam is going to escape no leaks such as that. I'm gonna go ahead and close the lid. I'm still gonna uh, maintain my 250 degrees. It's gonna have to come back up, of course. I've had the lid open. Now, I've got all the smoke that I need. It's still smoking, but four hours of smoke is more than enough for this brisket right here. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let this thing rock until I hit 198 to 200 degrees internal temp. At that point, I'm gonna do a check with a toothpick and make sure that we are done indeed. All right, I just pulled this out. My alarm went off on my uh, my eye grill. It's looking really good. Let's give it the final test to make sure we're done here. All right, I've got a skewer with a sharp point, just like a toothpick. You could actually use a toothpick, even though a toothpick wouldn't be quite long enough. All right, you want to go through with no resistance. And that's pulling. That's going through pretty good. Let's try it down here on the flat. Oh yeah, that's really good there. Go on here, fly. All right, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to wrap this up really tight and I'm going to let it just hang out for about a good hour, hour and a half. Oh yeah, we're good. All right, I tell you what, this is a Texas style brisket. And when I think of Texas barbecue a brisket, especially i think of uh one of my youtube buddies over there his name is manuel rios and he has the el rabbit's barbecue youtube channel and i tell you what this guy has got some awesome off the chain barbecue recipes going on his channel and uh he recently did a texas style brisket and uh go over there and check him out all right i've been letting this brisket hang out wrapped up in aluminum foil for the last two hours I finally got it to where I could actually put my hands underneath the foil without it burning me. It's still very warm, but it's going to be just right. Now, what I'm going to do is start to slice some of this up. Now, keep in mind that when you slice meat, that it will dry out pretty rapidly. So I'm only going to slice off what, I, what we're going to eat tonight. And this is your flat right through here. And around here is where your point takes over right in this area and the point is your premium meat out of a brisket the flat actually runs the whole distance you have a layer of fat between that and the point so I'm going to cut right across here we'll move this piece out of the way let's take a look at this Oh wow, look at all that juice. That's what I'm talking about. All 
All right, now the grain on the point, I mean the flat, I'm sorry, it runs basically this way. Now on the, the point end, it runs this way. So what you want to do is cut it in half just like this. And if you'll notice, right here, you got this layer of fat that runs through there and it's just about rendered out. That's what's so juicy. And look how much fat cap I got left. It went from a half inch down to a quarter. And after I slice this, you can easily just trim that off, no big deal. So what you wanna do at this point is cut this into quarter inch slices. Oh, this turned out phenomenal. First cook on the grill dome was a huge success. Alright, I don't know if you noticed, but I moved everything indoors because it's been threatening rain all day. And I just decided to bring it here in the, the edge of my garage. And uh, I have a fan blowing. It's probably some of the background noise you're hearing right now. It's doing two things, keeping the flies away and it's keeping the smoke pushed out. Which has already quit smoke and I'm already shut down on my uh, grill dome. So, here's the brisket. There you go. Mm. That is melting your mouth good. It's not overdone. It's not underdone. It's perfect. So easy to do. Now, keep in mind, this is the better cut of that brisket. The flat's going to be just as good, too. I know it is. And uh, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, smoke your ribs. Mm-hmm.